curious, how many of you are here for the first time? Oh, well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to see so many people returning. That's great. Uh, I, I usually see a few more new people, but the, love, love to have new people. Um, anyway, I'm Dave Hurst. I'm the founder of New Space Chicago, and we are Chicago's community of space entrepreneurs and other people who are interested in building space companies located in Chicago. Uh, we believe that Chicago is well positioned to become a player in the developing space industry, uh, and so we're uh, trying to uh, in encourage companies to do that. Uh, before we really get started, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, first, a shout out to our sponsors. Uh, M-Hub is this lovely space that uh, we are in, and uh, uh, M-Hub is basically a maker space for entrepreneurs. Uh, it's a startup incubator, um, it's a, a manufacturing innovation center, and out of the 63,000 square feet of space for co-working and um, uh, developing companies, we also have about half of the space devoted to the prototyping lab, which includes machine shops, 3D printers, electronics facilities, uh, test equipment and, and so forth. So it's really a great place to build a company that wants to make things from atoms rather than electrons. So we're very happy to be here and, and uh, appreciative of their support. Our second sponsor is Metropolitan Brewing. Uh, they are one of the first craft breweries located in Chicago and they just recently celebrated their 10th anniversary. So we're very happy to have their support and uh, they've been providing some of the beer that you've been enjoying this evening. So, uh, a couple of brief updates about the space industry. Uh, so, uh, last month, or maybe the previous month, I mentioned that SpaceX had launched the Crew Dragon capsule to the space station. It was an unmanned test, but it was the first uh, mission for that spacecraft. Um, it successfully went to the space station, docked there for a few days, and returned back to the ground. Um, and then, uh, sometime late last month, SpaceX was performing a um, test of the Super Draco thrusters, which you, you see here, um, and it exploded. The spacecraft was completely destroyed. So we don't know what happened, uh, but it was very disappointing to see that happen. It's definitely a setback as far as uh, commercial crew goes. Uh, so we are uh, waiting to see what uh, actually happened there. On a slightly happier note, uh, Blue Origin launched their 11th mission of the New Shepard rocket uh, to space. Uh, this is a suborbital flight, it went up and came back down. Um, but this is a reusable vehicle, and this one in particular has been launched to space five times. Uh, so it's uh, one more step along the development of Blue Origin to uh, reusable space travel. And then just today, Jeff Bezos unveiled the Blue Moon Lunar Lander. Uh, and so this is uh, Blue Origin's uh, uh, spacecraft to go and land on the moon. Uh, they're saying that they'll be able to land uh, something like three and a half tons on the lunar surface. This has been, believe it or not, under development for the last three years. So exactly when they're going to launch it to the moon, I don't know, but it's good to see uh, the space uh, industry making this kind of progress. So we are starting a new feature in our uh, programs this evening, uh, and these are what we call lightning pitches. So this is an opportunity for anyone, it could be you, uh, to stand up here and pitch an idea. Uh, we are not in Shark Tank, so we are not going to um, uh, evaluate your idea critically, maybe I should say, but uh, the idea is to uh, try out an idea, get some feedback, maybe ask for participation, uh, or potentially even uh, ask for uh, uh, financial support as well. So tonight we have two lightning pitches. Uh, the first one will be from Ken Walchak of the Far Horizons program at the Adler Planetarium, and the second one will be from Dave Cook, who is the CEO of Air Chicago. Um, and so, uh, Ken, uh, do you want to come up? 
Uh, the format here is that they get three minutes to pitch their idea, um, and then about uh, two or three minutes of questions. So please listen to what he's going to say, think of your questions, and, and you're ready to, to give him your, your uh, feedback. All right, yeah, as uh, Dave said, I'm from the Adler Planetarium, uh, and uh, the Far Horizon program uh, does near space launches uh, with high altitude balloons and student board experiments. Um, and uh, we've also launched our first satellite, student built satellite, about two and a half weeks ago. Um, on a, it's a FinSat that was on a resupply mission to the ISS. Um, so we're looking to as far horizons as we can. Um, but we're also ground based when it comes to the science we want to do. So, in that, we have a project we've been working on for about eight months called GoNet. GoNet is a ground observing network for observing light pollution from the ground. Uh, our target was making student build, volunteer build, and also under $100. It's a $100 unit that does real science. Uh, this is just a test uh, gift from a, 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 a test run that I did on my roof uh, some weeks ago. Um, and this is actually only one part of a full science mission. The other one is going to be launched Monday. We're going to be flying into the stratosphere at 90,000 feet above Chicago, imaging light pollution from the stratosphere. The first time ever in the world. And these are the ground-based corollaries for us to understand the conditions above and below at the same time. Um, and by the way, our future plans is to launch a thing called NightSat. NightSat will be the first ever dedicated light pollution imaging satellite. Uh, once again, student built and and, uh, and also volunteer built. Um, so what I was wondering is these units are now producing gigabytes of data every night. Uh, we have an Amazon web server that they all upload to, and we, if we're going to make a pitch, it would be anybody interested in a maker uh, type of project that's science based, that's educational based, and maybe has skills in data processing, IT, or uh, web services, or anything that can actually help take this product, the data we get, and make it, uh, well, even more, even more important. Uh, um, uh, just to, yeah, okay, well, I'll use that in a 20. Um, one of the things that we've done is uh, we've actually been able to build about 50 of these so far uh, with help of a corporate sponsor. And um, now that we have that many being built, we're going to put a network of them around Chicago. And it, we're working with researchers uh, who do actually uh, frog surveys, uh, work with researchers who do. Uh, um, uh, do cancer research as well, and to look at the influence of light pollution on health and on the environment. Um, and since we now have 50 of these, we're actually able to distribute them in places we would have never guessed. So for example, this summer, for the first time ever, uh, a group of STEM-oriented uh, students in Haiti are going to be building and deploying these um, to compare and contrast uh, the sky is over Haiti at night, the light pollution there in their environment, and the students that we have in the city. So, um, with that in mind, I think you have a lot of what we're doing, and if there's any questions, any way you may be interested, sparks of interest. Yes? What are you measuring? Different kinds of light, and what's the difference when you measure the ground and the stratosphere? When, when you're in the stratosphere, looking down, you're looking at the sources. Um, so we can actually identify, so our first map of light pollution that we're going to hopefully start putting together this Monday, after we're flying this Monday, will, for example, we can look at where, for example, the city of Chicago is going through a four-year transition of over a quarter million streetlights from high-pressure sodium to LED. So we can actually monitor the change, see if those bluer LEDs are making an impact on, uh, for example, the environment. Um, but seeing it from above, we can just kind of map out where all the light's coming from. With these correlated with flight, then we can actually look at the impact on the sky. Oh, you're in this area where LEDs have been transformed already. What are we seeing there? Oh, you're in this area with a lot of commercial mercury vapor lights. How does it seem so? Both of these are Is, so is your, like so is this a, a business model perspective? Is this or at least like data collection perspective? 
is this kind of like a uh, SETI screensaver where like I could then have this thing that mm -hmm. makes me feel like I'm contributing to a larger uh, educational experience. I'm glad you mentioned that because we are we have a lot of science, uh, citizen science initiatives at the Adler. Zoo universe is born in the Adler, or it's actually been grown up in the Adler. Uh, it's a citizen science project, huge citizen science project, and we are actually working right now to um, try to design a citizen science project based on a little less GoNet and more like night night lights. Night light is the high altitude balloon mission. We're going to get literally tens of thousands of images that have to be georectified and identify sources on the ground. So we're coming up with a potential Zooniverse, if you're familiar with that type project, that you can look at and compare a map to the nighttime image and go, oh, I can recognize that curve in the road or that <clears throat> um, you know feature or whatever. Because we have maps of geo, uh, uh, located maps, geography, landscape, and everything else. But at night, it's like looking at stars. You're literally just getting points of light. So uh, maybe there's a stay tuned. By the way, oh, I did the best part of the pitch. I forgot. If you go to openexplorer.com, Open Explorer is a National Geographic um, uh, project that is, in a sense, a laboratory notebook, a project notebook for um, projects. Search night, night light, N I T E L I T E. I should have had a graphic up here. Open Explorer, night light. You can follow our project live. Uh, we do quite regular uh, updates. So when we get a citizen science component to it, which we are thinking about, we're trying to develop, you can find out about it there. And just as a follow up to that, mm -hmm. like if there be a connection to maybe some sort of like uh, uh, app that could uh, help with star uh, any app developers here? I mean <laughs> that's a really good like, question. We would need an app developer. See this this is when David asked me to go up here and talk about this, I was like, oh, is this going to be right for your audience? Uh, what can I pitch to them? And I realized there's so many technical skills that we could use. We're the engineers, we're the scientists, and uh, you know, we're, it's the some of the skills, like I said uh, earlier, uh, web service, uh, IT, uh, app development. Uh, we could use all that help. If anybody's interested, just contact me, and I'll be here for the evening, and I'll give you my information. Kick me off. Yep. All right, time's up. And Ken will be around, so if you're interested in what he's doing, please contact him afterwards. Uh, next, we have David Cook, who is uh, CEO of Air Chicago and uh, also one of the directors of New Space Chicago. David. Are you going to do the forwarding or do you have technology for me? Well, first of all, uh, while Dave's getting that put up, uh, I want to find out from all of those of you who know me, how many of you put down a bet that I can't do this in three minutes? <laughs> nice. CEO of Air Chicago. We're a startup company. We've been at it for about three years now here in the Chicago area. Uh, we're an alternative to airline travel. I don't know how many of you are traveling by airlines, but I'll bet you a bunch of you. And uh, would anybody raise their hand if they're having a good time out there traveling on the airlines? I didn't think so. So we're an alternative to airline travel. In fact, we say it's us or the bus because we think airline travel is becoming just like bus travel uh, in the U.S. Our card members, the folks that fly on us, are folks that want to get away from flying on business class, get away from that experience. So an example here that I'll show you, uh, on the airlines, door-to-door -door travel time from Chicago to Manhattan is about six hours, and it's going to cost you about $1,200 for an unrestricted business class ticket over to New York. Our card members fly in what we call Air Chicago class private jets. And it's about three hours door to door on Air Chicago for about the same price. So in other words, private jet travel at uh, airline business class fares. We're prototyping this right now out of Chicago Executive Airport in Wheeling. Uh, we'll be flying out to 30 cities in the U.S. Those are the cities. Uh, and uh, out in the morning, five days a week, back in the evening. That's called the corporate show. Uh, once we approve the prototype, then we're going to expand it across North America. We're going to go install it in Europe. 
South America, Asia, uh, and then we're going to tie all of those uh, continents together initially with supersonic business jets. So today it takes about 14 hours to fly from Chicago to Beijing in a subsonic airliner. With a supersonic business jet, it will take about uh, half that time, so about seven hours. But in about 10 years, Boeing is saying they're going to have hypersonic airliners available for folks like Air Chicago. We intend to deploy these across uh, the globe. And that will cut the travel time from Chicago to Beijing down from 14 hours to two hours, gate to gate. So that's why we call Air Chicago space scalable. And that's how I got involved down here, Dave gave a presentation about three years ago, I think, on space scalability. That's a business that can start out here on Earth, uh, make money, grow, and then use its capabilities, its base, to expand into space. And that's what we intend to do with Air Chicago. Uh, our ask, what we're looking for here, our investors, we're in our uh, second round of financing, a million dollar round, we're about halfway funded on that round. Uh, we're looking for some leadership on our marketing campaign. Our leader of our marketing effort, Nate Junkin, who's the president of Air Chicago Jet Card, is also, unfortunately, I would say today, a skydive time. Okay. He just crashed uh, last weekend. So I'm looking for a new person to head up our marketing. And, of course, we're looking for card members, folks to come on board and use our service. Questions for him? One, what is the cost to be a card member and how long does it last? Question. Second question, will you expand the DDR Chicago name or change it? Say that last one again. you expand around the country, around the world, you can do it under Air Chicago or you can the new name? Two, two good, great questions. First one, uh, what does it cost to, to use this service? I showed you a typical airfare about business class, uh, but you have to have an Air Chicago jet card to access the flights. That depends on how much you're going to travel. I'll give you one example. Our Cirrus car for real serious business travelers, folks that are traveling more than three round trips a month. That's a $14,000 annual membership fee, $7,000 a month, and then all you can fly for free. So that's the way you do it. The name change, yes, that was very perceptive to pick that up. As we expand this to New York, for example, we'll set it up as Air New York, Air Miami, Air LA. And that's because we want to uh, plant our roots in each community and have that local flavor, just like United Airlines did here in Chicago. They always advertised they were the hometown airline. They got a lot of traction from that. So great questions. Anything else? Uh, are you uh, <laughs> knowing that this is kind of like uh, connected us and like future technology that's coming through? Are you guys also uh, road mapping um, the personal quad copters that are kind of coming out or being roadmap and, and R&D, you know, the automated like taxi devices that are, that are being talked about? Is that on your roadmap at all? No. Okay. They won't give me any more time to get on that supplies. But the answer's good. All right. And then, so big one, what's the competitive environment for this business model? Say that again, Richard. What is the competitive environment for this business model? Great question, thank you. Well, we're up against the airlines. Did I say one? And that's, that's our, that's our, those are our competitors. Uh, we have some other folks that are trying things that are similar to ours around the country. One of them called Jet Smarter, you may have heard of. They were fairly successful in their marketing efforts. They actually just got bought by a VC outfit. This is global. So I guess you could say, at least to this stage, they've been successful. Otherwise, we don't have any direct competition uh, other than the airlines here in Chicago or really across the country. One more question? Great. Well, thank you. I just want to say one more thing, David. Uh, these pitches, the reason I volunteered to do this tonight is I wanted to tell you folks that they work. So if you have an idea, uh, you know, ask them for a little bit of time and tell us about it. Uh, when I gave my first pitch here a couple of years ago, I was looking for uh, a CEO. I found him, uh, Steve Bosco, who is the chairman of our uh, uh, partnership committee, who couldn't be here tonight. Uh, I was looking for investors. I, we picked up several investors from the new space group, so this works. 